Italia Worldwide, questa volta abbiamo una bellissima ospite, veramente bella, Susie Webb. Ciao Susie. Hi Susie. Ciao. Hello, hello everybody. Ciao Susie. Ok, Ciao. niente, adesso ti faremo tante domande, tante, tante domande. <ride> Vediamo un po' se ci racconti un po' della, della tua carriera. Ok. E cominciamo a parlare della del tuo tributo con gli ABBA, no? i FABBA Girls, e, um, è il numero uno al mondo come tributo band degli ABBA. Parlaci un po' di questa tua esperienza. Ok, first question. Um, it's a question that isn't about Queen, but it's about the FABBA Girls, which is the world number one ABBA's tribute band. So can you tell us a bit about this project? How did it start? Are you always working with So Nichols? Yes, so um, I joined a band about, I'm not sure how many years, maybe 13 years ago, called Bjorn Again. And they were the first ones to do an ABBA tribute band. They were from Australia. And um, I did five auditions for them and eventually joined them. Um, they wanted to hear my Swedish accent, my singing ABBA, what I looked like when I danced and all these auditions. So I joined them and then I got my friend Zoe Nicholas, who I'd done quite a lot of backing vocals with, to join me um, in that band. And we did that for a little while. Then we left and formed our own band called the Faber Girls. So that was probably 14 years ago. <clears throat> um, and we have been very lucky to travel around the world. We have a whole band. Sometimes we just do shows, the duo, the foursome or the six piece band also with a 80 piece orchestra we've worked in bangkok in thailand so um yeah so we've been doing private parties corporate events weddings festivals for many years but very high-end um, events yeah and we're still doing it okay i love abba so much you love abba yeah. well You know, ABBA know that we're around, we're about, and they we met them at the premiere of Mamma Mia, which was in London, which we went to, we met them there. And then since then, I've done a, an album of ABBA songs in a bossa nova style, and they like that too, which is really nice for me. Yeah. Sì, che io ho sentito l'ultimo album degli ABBA e è molto bello, mi è piaciuto tanto. Uh, we both uh, listened to Abba's latest album and we both loved it. Yeah, very mm -hmm. good. Yeah. In particular, really? I loved it. It's lovely because they've kept to their original style. Mm. They haven't tried to change the way they do things. <coughs> that's, I think, a really cool thing to do because most people try and keep up to date with, you know, fashions and fads and stuff the styles of production and they've just done their own thing the way they always do it and I think they've done a really good job. Hmm. Allora, qual è stata la tua prima volta che sei entrata in contatto col mondo dei Queen, Susie? Ok, so when did you first get in touch with the Queen environment and Queen themselves? 
Well, uh, we started working with Spike Edney and um, in his band, the SAS Band, and we would do Fabba Girls to start with, and then quickly go and change and um, and become the Rock Chicks, which is us doing backing vocals. So we did that with Spike many years ago. Gosh, um, I don't know how long ago. <sighs> I really don't know. I've been in this band for 20 years, I think. So we used to, I suppose we did backing vocals first, then we brought in the ABBA thing and did that. Um, so we sort of do that alongside. When he wants us to do ABBA, we do ABBA. Sometimes the rock stars who are in the SAS band, Spikes All Stars. Um, there's been many rock stars who've played along with us doing ABBA, which is quite funny, really, because we joke and we put funny Swedish accents on a bit of a parody um so we have fun with it and everyone enjoys it even the rock stars you know they enjoy watching us from the side of the stage or coming on and joining us okay so that's how it started anyway shepherd's bush emperor i think was the first place we worked with spike and the sas band when it's very early days okay Va bene, e nel 98 eri con la band di Praia per il tour di Anna The World. E com'è stato stare in giro con lui e fare quel tour? Io personalmente ti ho visto nel, nel 98 in, a Rolling Stone a Milano, qui a Milano. You were in Brian's band in 1998, I was one year old, for the Another World Tour. Yes. And so how was it to be with him and the band? My friend here told me that he saw you um, in Milan. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, I was just one year old <laughs> at the time. <laughs> I was only five years old. <laughs> only joking. Um, I wasn't really five years old. Um, but yeah, that was lovely to see you in Milan. And um, we loved it being in Italy. I remember Milan and I remember being in Italy very well. We had some fantastic dates there with Brian. So that tour was um, <clears throat> extremely happy world tour. Everyone got on, everyone had fun. Uh, I think we drunk far too much. But we had a lot of fun and, um, you know, Brian was happy. It, it, it was a, a really very happy time of our lives. And we, we had a, a great uh, tour, actually. Yeah, traveled all over the world. Yeah, Japan, all over Australia, we ended up. We, we didn't want to go home. So we stayed there for an extra week or 10 days, all of us. We just canceled the flights and stayed in this lovely hotel with a swimming pool and it had a big rock in the middle of the swimming pool and Jamie used to get and play the guitar on this rock and we'd all <laughs> sing in the swimming pool around it um, and that was at the end of the, t the Another World Tour. <laughs> okay. eh, Susi, l'album fu presentato a Roma in un piccolissimo locale, il Big Mama. Eh, ti ricordi qualcosa in particolare di, quella, di quel momento? Okay, Another World was first launched live in a small pub in Rome, the Big Mama. So what do you remember about that concert? Um, nothing. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so so, the, so, oh. Did you, so let's, let's think about this. So, okay, the Another World tour, did you say, was launched the Big Mama? <clears throat> yeah, he did yeah. a performance there. Yeah, we did. It was quite a small performance, if I remember correctly. It wasn't a big I, place. I don't know, I was little. <laughs> I you were one. <laughs> yeah, I was one, literally. <laughs> I remember um, I remember it because everyone was, we were talking a lot to the audience and close with everyone. And it was very intimate. Will you ask him if I'm right about that? Because obviously it's a long time ago and there was a few, but it was a very intimate show. Mm -hmm. wasn't it? Okay. Really ask him that if he oh, remembers if it was interesting. Oh, okay. yeah. Will you ask him? Me? <laughs> well, I could. <laughs> no, yeah, if you could ask him if it if if it was a very close close intimate show, that's what I'm saying, because I think I remember it. Mm -hmm. Was he there? Ah uh, ma questo chiedere a te se eri lì? Eri lì al Big Mama? 
No, 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 so che ha iniziato lì quel tour, diciamo. Sì. Oh uh, no, he wasn't there, so he can't tell uh, you much about it. Uh, so I, c- I can't tell you much about it apart from it was very intimate. And I remember we spent a lot of time talking to everyone who was there. And um, it was a very exciting time for us. Yeah, it was a very mm-hmm. exciting kickoff for this tour. Okay. Okay, so. Dictionary here because my vocabulary, my, my Italian vocabulary is very small. So I can say, No, no mi rompere le palle. That means good evening, right? State bene! Sono felice di vedervi. Do you want to do something? Let's. Yeah, right. Oh, I need these. Thank you. It's a genius. Right, if you're on you. I think I'm my clothes. Take off my clothes? What? I don't know I can do it. This is an acoustic guitar, you see. This is an acoustic set. You know, it just goes very quiet. It's cold. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, Jamie, shall we do this? Okay. People see us everywhere. They think you really care. But myself, I can see. anni dal regino e ha assistito dal vivo al iconico intro di Brian sul, sul tetto del Buckingham Palace. E puoi dirci le tue emozioni di quella giornata? Ok, in 2002 uh, you were at, the, uh, at Her Majesty's Jubilee and you saw Brian's iconic performance on the Buckingham Palace roof. Um, what did you feel while watching that performance? I felt um, very proud of him. We were sharing a dressing room, um, so we were backstage before he had to go upstairs on the roof and do this. So I was with him just before and he was extremely nervous because he said if I um, if I make a mistake here, you know, the whole world will see it forever. 
and he didn't make a mistake and he looked fabulous in that suit and the iconic pictures and um in fact i was looking for through some bits of memorabilia that i have and i saw um the photograph that he gave me and he signed it um i should have brought it here today but anyway um he, he showed me this photograph um he signed this photograph and i looked at it this morning you know it was an amazing gig and you know everybody there was hugely famous it was iconic moment in history um and in fact um i'm just going to show you the t-shirt that i wore that day wait mm -hmm. because this is my um t-shirt i want I it you want it so if i put the um lights on you can see it sparkle wow i want it yeah <laughs> so this was a, a very special uh, moment because um i made this this is with swarovskis wow. you know, swarovski crystals oh. and i made another one which uh, you don't you haven't seen so much but i've still worn it oh. and i still want it <laughs> this one's uh, I've, I've, every, uh, many times I've worn this when I've worked with Brian and Roger, but this one I made for the Queen's Golden Jubilee. So it was at the Queen's Palace. I was singing with Queen and I had this. So um, I was wearing this and the cameras were on here a lot of the time because of it says Queen and the Queen's Golden Jubilee. So uh, I had even people like um, Bruce Dickinson and his wife at the time phoning me from America saying, I've just seen you on the television with your Queen t-shirt. And um, so I just thought I'd show you that um, because it was from that day that I wore it. Anyway, I'll put that here. They're beautiful. So, um, yeah, but anyway, so that concert was amazing. Brian did his bit on the roof perfectly and and then um and then he came back down and then we performed some queen songs to everybody at buckingham palace and it was along the mall which is the road that goes up in london from the palace it's a famous road mm -hmm. and everyone thousands of people were waving flags um and then there was lots of very you know ozzy osbourne was there i think tom jones lots of famous names and then um so we we did that and then at the end um paul mccartney played um hey jude i think mm -hmm. and we were singing with him there um yeah it was a very a special day and then afterwards we went to a party where um the princes were prince william and prince harry and they also commented on my t-shirt which is quite nice but yeah it was just a beautiful day and of course we're coming up to the platinum jubilee uh, of the queen very soon in a few weeks time oh. so, celebrations yeah mm. Susi, allora nel 2010 hai partecipato insieme ai Queen al, al Battle Royal Hall con una grande performance di Queen e, e mi cantò Tom Chappie, It's His Own Life. E, ti ha emozionato quella versione lì? Ok, um, there was a Queen performance at Albert, Albert Royal Hall in 2010 and in particular Tom Chaplin did a wonderful performance of 
it's a hard life. I yeah. suppose it was a very emotional moment, wasn't it? Yes, the Royal Albert Hall in London is uh, the most iconic building and concert hall in England, I think. And um, so it's a very special place to play. And I've been lucky enough to play, sing there many times. But it is a beautiful building. And the show was for Rock Gala for the Prince's Trust, which is the Prince Charles. He has a charity called the Prince's Tr Trust. And so I sang at that with Queen that time. Uh, before that, I think I'd done three years with um, other artists. So I was part of the... Um, the band and the band for the Prince's Trust was made up of um, Jamie Cullum on keyboards. Do you know Jamie Cullum? Um, Midyear on guitar. Um, who else? Um, on bass, it was um, from Level Forty Two, Mark King playing the bass. So it's a really well, fantastic, basic. A rock band and then the artists came and joined Queen and you know um, but but also on that show uh, Midyear sang Seven Seas of Rye yeah, on the same night actually and so Tom from Keen was lovely and fantastic uh, singer and he did a great job of, of that song and then Midyear did Seven Seas of Rye which was a really hard song to sing and he did a good job um, but yeah, it was really good. It was for a big charity. Um, um, and then the Prince, you know, we met with the Prince, Prince Charles afterwards. And it was a lovely venue. I don't know if you've ever been to the Royal Albert Hall, but when you come to London, it's worth seeing a concert there. <laughs> I can imagine. Yes. Sì, che poi fu un bellissimo concerto, molto apprezzato dai fans. Veramente bello. He said it was a beautiful concert and it was very appreciated by the fans. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, it was very, very much, uh, it was very it sold out and it was a beautiful concert. Yeah, it was. To play. It's just a simple fact of life It could happen to anyone You win, you lose It's a chance you have to check with love Oh yeah, I fell in love But now you say it's over And I'm falling apart Allora, hai anche partecipato al concerto di quello sono Pavarotti. Eh, Come era mai sono durante le prove e che emozione si prova ad aver condiviso il palco con il miglior tenore di Fide? Okay, so you also took part at the Pavarotti concert, you know. So, how was he as a person during rehearsals and how was it to share the stage with the greatest tenor of all time? Yes, it was, you know, a very special concert. One thing, it was absolutely beautiful. The, the venue, it was a moderner um, and... Uh, oh. It, it were his hometown and uh, the the stage and the set was just beautiful um he was lovely he was very sweet man very friendly and we were rehearsing for quite a long time beforehand i remember walking around the side of the stage 
I'm finding a doorway. So I opened it and there was a very big portaloo. It's a toilet. Ah! <laughs> a very big one, which we thought was very funny. We were looking around and we went, ooh! <laughs> but uh, we've been very naughty sneaking around the backstage until we were needed so that was one of the most funny things i've ever seen actually it was huge but uh, he needed a big one didn't he but um seriously <laughs> rock and roll you see rock and roll story. Um, but anyway, so we so we uh, we rehearse, and he had a big choir behind him, an orchestra, and Andre, Andre Bocelli was also singing at that concert. Lionel Richie, Bono, I think, was doing it, and many other uh, Zucchero, mm -hmm. and um, and so at the end of the concert, so we, we were standing on the right. We have lovely white suits made and. We were having lots of fun in the dressing rooms behind. And I um, I remember sharing a microphone near the end of the concert with Lionel Richie. And he said, we're singing an Italian song now. And uh, so I said, yes, I know. We went through it before um, we rehearsed it. He said, yes, but I don't remember one thing about it. And I went, neither do I. So. Throughout this Italian song, he was pushing me the microphone and I was pushing it back to him and it, because neither of us knew the song. It was quite funny. Um, but, uh, oh, and then we went for dinner at Pavarotti's restaurant where you have black uh, squid ink uh, pasta. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. First time I'd ever had that. And, um, it, you know, we all had a lovely time in the restaurant. It was, it, it was very special again, you know, super special day, for sure. And memories, you know, memories. And it's for um, Iraqi children, I think, this, this Pavarotti and Friends. It was called Pavarotti and Friends, the concert. Yeah, it was very good. Ok, 
Okay, how were um, Brian and Roger when they were off stage? What kind of relationship did you have with them? Um, lovely. I mean, I've toured with, you know, Brian extensively. You know, when you spend a lot of time with people um, for months every day, you get to know them very well. And um, they are two lovely people. They're educated, kind, nice men who love life and love, I mean, Brian, as you know, he um, he looks after animals. He has a sanctuary mm -hmm. where people are there looking after the animals. Um, I was at his place recently and um, th there's people looking after foxes and badgers and he just loves animals and wildlife in general. He's a kind, which means he's a kind person. And, uh, and Roger too, you know, um, I'm good friends with Roger and Serena and they're very lovely people. Um, it, you know, they've got lovely families. Um, I think I feel very blessed that I work with them quite a lot and, and they're, you know, good people, very kind. They get on well, they're old friends, they've known each other for years, so they're, they're close. Yeah. yeah. Ok, Susi, eh, allora noi lavoriamo sia con Brian che con Roger e eh, loro hanno da solisti. Eh, che differenza hai notato diciamo, tra i due? Ok, you worked with both Roger and Brian in their solo projects. So, what are the differences between the two projects? Mm, differences? Uh, oh, well, they just, you know, when they write on their own, they write differently, obviously. They mostly, as they get older, I imagine, write about their passions, you know, whether it's the stars and the moons or the animals or um, feelings as they get older. I mean, Roger, a song that I sang on Roger's recent album, um, Gangsters Are Running This World. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of, you know, it, I suppose it's, you know, about <laughs> gangsters. We're surrounded by pe wrong people in the world and we just have to get on with it. Um, and you know and then brian doing his own thing you know they're both great projects that they do but they do what they want to do instead of you know um feel that they have to go down some route or other but having said that queen have always done what they wanted to do i mean when they first had a hit with bohemian rhapsody nobody thought that that song would be a hit because it was something like six minutes long and there was um, Kenny Everett, who was a friend of Freddie's, um, a, a DJ and a television presenter. And he kept pushing this song, saying, I'm going to put this on the radio all the time. And somehow he helped to make that song be a huge success. And it was played a number one for a very long time. Whereas um, most people said that will never work because it's too, too long. You know, it's much too long. So they've always done their own thing. That's what I'm saying. They've always not gone along with record companies telling them what to do. They do what they want and they're still doing what they want. Um, but individually working with them both, it's a pleasure. You know, it's, they're so nice and easy going and we go back a long way. We laugh and um, do silly things and, you know, it's just nice to, to keep working with them. It's, you know, I feel lucky really. Susi, allora, per parte della Sass Band da circa 20 anni, che tipo è Spike? You've been part of the SAS band for like 20 years. Ooh. What kind of person is Spike? Sorry, I dropped my phone. <laughs> uh, Spike is one of my best friends. He's my, me and my partner, Rory. He's one of our great friends. We're very, very close. And so he and his wife, Kyle, we get on very, you know, they're best friends with us. So he's lovely. He's very organized. He's very together. And he's been running this band. He's, you know, he's great with telling stories. Spike is a storyteller. So if he brings out a book one of these days, don't be surprised. But he, um, it, yeah, he's great fun. He's always got stories to tell about this and that. And so, um, I've loved his company over the years and he's obviously introduced us to many, many artists that, you know, I've worked with Zoe for many years, but we've done backing vocals for so many people. And it's really through Spike um, 
because um and through brian's and you know through those contacts yeah so i mean i think that we have done more backing vocals than anyone in the world possibly um the two of us together which is uh, more artists working with more artists so yeah spike is great uh, bless you <laughs> allergies get your tissue <laughs> No, no, it's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> no, so Spike's great, and we have a lot of fun with Spike. I see him in America sometimes. We see him in London, and um, you know he's be he's opened many doors for us. And uh, you know we've got a loyalty between each other that's that's very special. Quindi dal vivo eh, anche con Freddie Mercury oppure no? Eh, eh, visto che sei una cantante professionista e hai una bellissima voce, eh, hai mai avuto di portarlo magari all'inizio della tua carriera? Ok, um, have you ever seen Queen live with Freddie? And since you're a professional singer and from one singer to another, you've got a great voice, by the way, your voice is great. Did you Thanks. ever get the chance to meet him, to meet Freddie? Sadly not. I was too young, like you. <laughs> no, I, I, I sadly didn't start working with them until, um, you know, as I said, with Spike later. And and so we didn't meet Freddie. Um, of course, I've heard many stories about Freddie, how wonderful he was. I've seen loads of concerts that he's done uh, on videos and TV. So I didn't meet him. Um, but of course, you know, he had the most iconic voice in the world, really. And, um, you know, um, it's funny because I was just um, looking at something that I was just thinking about a concert that we did, which was the first ever Queen concert without Freddie. And um, I don't know if you know about this concert, but it was in 2001. And it was at a club called The Ocean. And I was singing there, so we did some Faber Girls. Um, and then uh, one of my, somebody that I knew, I introduced to them and brought in Bruce Dickinson. And he sang a Queen song. And Paul Young sang, and Chris Thompson from Manfred Mann, Manfred Mann's uh, 
sang as well, Chris Thompson. So, um, but yeah, I brought Bruce Dickinson, Bruce Dickinson into the, the this um, night and he sang. But it was a, a special, the first time that they went out as Queen without Freddie, the first time. And the club was called The Ocean. It was in Hackney in London, East London. Eh, esisteva il concerto di Rosa in ottobre, noi eravamo a Manchester, cioè io ero a Manchester con gli amici e, e niente, se tu hai assistito qualche concerto con Roger l'anno scorso. Uh, did you get to see Roger live back in October 2021, sorry, because he, my friend here, was in Manchester and he said it was awesome. Yes, I went to Shepherd's Bush Empire. Mm. And, um, yeah, he invited me as I was singing on his album. Um, it was me singing on it, girls, and uh, Katie Tunstall was the other girl. And um, But yeah, so I went to see it and I thought it was absolutely fantastic, actually. And his voice was amazing. Um, it was a really great, I really enjoyed the show. Really exciting. Uh, it was exciting to watch as well as to listen to, you know, and um, I thought he did a really good job and he got very good write-ups with that concert. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And it was lucky for me because I live quite close to Shepherd's Bush Empire, so it's 10 minutes in a taxi. But, yeah, very, very good um, concert. And you enjoyed it too. Sì, sì, bellissimo, bellissimo. Fantastic. You said it was beautiful. And Roger's voice was brilliant. Mm. On point. Uh, absolutely. Stato, I mean, è stato un concerto perfetto dall'inizio alla fine. He said it was a perfect performance from the beginning to the very end. Yeah, I agree. Exactly the same. I think the same. Mm. I was really happily surprised, actually. Really happy to see such a well put together concert. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of light and shade, um, new songs, old Queen songs. It's fantastic. And in Shepherd's Bush um, Empire, uh, Brian came on and played. <laughs> yeah, I saw it on Instagram. No, but I think Manchester won't say. Yeah, Brian didn't come up on Manchester, he said. So he didn't see. Uh, <laughs> it's a Don't worry. I didn't see anything because I was here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it was very, very exciting moment, um, you know, because everyone, everyone went mad. They're crazy. They went crazy when that happened. It was lovely for Roger and it was great with Brian. You know, it was very, um, I think I, I filmed a bit of it actually, but it was really good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Allora, hai partecipato alla reunion dei, dei Pacer con Ross Stewart e Rod Wood, due personaggi particolari, vero? You took part at the Faces reunion with Rod Stewart and Ron Wood. So, yeah. these two people are quite particular, aren't they? Um, those people are particular, did you mm -hmm. say? In a positive uh, way, in a positive way, of course. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we actually... <coughs> I sang at um, Rod Stewart's wedding mm -hmm. as well in uh, Portofino. Porto ah, no. Portofino. Yeah. His last wedding, his most recent wedding to Penny. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'd already worked, done something with him. Um, but yeah, it was a real pleasure to sing on the one and only Faces reunion. And it was with Rod Stewart, Ronnie Wood, and Kenny Jones, the drummer, at mm -hmm. Kenny Jones's Polo Club in Hurtwood, Hurtwood Polo Club. And um, yeah, I mean, the you know rehearsals were so funny because those two guys are like Ronnie Wood and Rod Stewart are just so funny together. They're laughing and joking and um, cheeky like little boys again, you know. It was lovely, and um, but yeah, it was really good, to, really a uh, fantastic uh, concert to be part of. Um, again, a piece of history. Yeah, so um, so yeah, it would be good to do some more with them. Actually, I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. Okay, 
They were lovely to work with, very nice to work with too. I can imagine. Yeah. Eh, so, se tu hai lavorato con tantissimi artisti a livello assoluto, Queen, Rescue, The Good, Tom Jones, Harry e tanti altri, eh, quali sono quelli che ti hanno colpito di più a livello artistico e anche a livello umano? Ok, you worked with a lot of marvelous artists such as Queen, Rod Stewart, Ron Wood, Tom Jones and more. Um, who left an impact on you the most in terms of artists and human beings? Okay, um, so of course the Queen guys are, mm. I suppose they're my favourites because I've known them for so long and I really love them as people as well as respect them hugely as musical artists. Okay, so that's my number one. And then um, people like, um, I worked, uh, I remember doing um, Rock Gala, which is Queen did with Keen, uh, Tom Chaplin. But I did it one year and um, with Phil Collins. Mm. And uh, we were singing a medley, a medley with Phil Collins of his hits. And um, as we were, uh, the, st the artists were being interviewed to come on the stage. So they said, Jamie Cullum on, key on keyboards. And everyone went, clap. This was <laughs> the Royal Act at Hall. And then mid-year on guitar, and everybody was, yeah, and the band. But they forgot me and Zoe. <laughs> and so we were all in these glittery dresses, sparkly dresses with Swarovskis everywhere. And they said, then this, ladies and gentlemen, is your rock gala band. So we were standing backstage, and we went, so we walked out and nobody clapped it was just we had to stand right at the front of the stage because our name wasn't on this piece of paper that day you know so as we came off after a couple of songs with some some artists to start off with phil collins that was so embarrassing and phil collins was standing there because we were just about to go on with him again and he said what happened I said they introduced everybody, but they didn't introduce us. And we're standing in glitzy dresses and we had to walk on the stage. And he went, leave it to me. So Phil Collins went on the stage and everyone clapped him. And, you know, and he said, I'd just like to introduce you to very special people. Susie Webb and Zoe Nicholas and everyone went mad and he did that and then we started his song and it was actually it was actually better for us but it was so kind of him because what I'm trying to say to you you know those artists are, are just about to walk on a very big stage Phil Collins hadn't done anything for quite a long time in the public eye and so he must have been very nervous and thinking about his own thing and to take the time to do something kind like that. I've always remembered that. So that's one of my little stories of kindness. Um, I liked him for that. Um, uh, but there's so many, um, I mean, there's, you know, so many artists really that we work with. Uh, um, anyway, I was going to show you something. I've got this out because Brian gave this to us when we were in his band. And I found it. He's got Susie. Mm, okay. And it's just a present that he gave us in 1998. Um, there. Okay. There. And it was a watch. Oh! <laughs> no, bellissimo. <laughs> a friend of mine has it too. No, stupendo. <laughs> but on the back, I don't know if you can read that. Uh, can you get it closer, please? Ah, okay. Oh. Thanks, Susie. Oh! Oh, dai. Oh. Penso che sia il regalo più bello del mondo, questo. This is a nice uh, little thing that I, I found and, and so I wanted to show it to you because it's been sitting in here for quite a long time. As you can imagine, it's... <laughs> so, um, that was a little present that he gave us the band. But the band was, you know, Eric Singer was the drummer. In, in Brian's band. And Eric Singer plays with um, Kiss and um, who else? Uh, who else is from Kiss and uh, Alice Cooper. 
Mm -hmm. so he's a great rock drummer and he was great fun and neil murray was in the band then and there were some people jamie yeah as for the phil collins thing i love phil so much he was uh, you know he's not very well now and i so, know i was so sad when i heard genesis retired yeah they did a show quite recently didn't they yeah but, you know he yeah he was he was um well, you know, he had a, his demons, I suppose. He's had a few problems, but he, he, you know, doing something kind like that, which everyone didn't see, but we saw, I just wanted to say it because it showed an extremely un, um, un, unselfish, you know, a kindness of someone, which I always think is nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel very lucky that I've worked with so many um, great artists and, um, and to work with people again when they ask you back again is is um, a privilege, isn't it? Really. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, I have a card here. Wait a second, I've got a little card, which is um, is this was my uh, my business card. Mm. I'm gonna probably hold it like that. I don't know if you can okay. see. Okay. On the back of it, it says some of the people that I've worked with. Wow. Can you turn it because it's and then I just rotate it please because it's flipped. What do you mean like that? No. Oh no no like this. Rotate it like this because oh, it's upside down. It's upside down. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, I see it now. Is that, is that too close? No no no, it's okay. I see it clearly. Fantastic. Okay. So there's some of the people I've worked with anyway, but Mm -hmm. yeah. but um so um yeah very lucky mostly rocky but you know there's people like gary newman and um you know i worked with gary newman for quite a long time i did a video with him and single with him called machine and soul so i'm in that video with him and he's had a, a big research again in in uh, america and you know he's still touring and stuff like that um but yeah, I mean, and also, you know, when, when we were in, um, I remember with Brian, we, you know, I went, when we were in Australia at the end of our tour with the, another world tour, uh, he took me to watch the stars. And so we drove up in a taxi up and up in Sydney, in Australia, all the way in. And the taxi driver said, do you want to get out here? And he went, um, no, keep driving. The taxi driver didn't know what was going on. I think he really thought, what the hell? No. So we drove and eventually we got away from all the lights in the S Sydney, up in this sort of mountainous area where it's all dark. And he said, this will be fine. And then Brian got this blanket out and we lay down like this and watched the stars. And we waited until we'd seen shooting stars. And he told me what all the stars were, uh, you know, the Milky Way, the constellations. We watched all the stars and then we came back again. It was wonderful because that was his passion. That's his passion, isn't it? One of his passions. A lifelong dream. Yeah. Oh so, um, yeah. So, so that was lovely. I mean, yeah. Um, you, but it's when someone's telling you about something that I know nothing really about, and it was really interesting, actually, really interesting. But well, we had to wait till we'd both seen a shooting star, because if you watch a shooting star and you mm -hmm. point it out to someone else, usually by the time you look, you've missed it. Mm -hmm, I know. So quick. They seem to move slowly, but they go away really quickly. So um, anyway. I know. The shooting star story. Mm.
Okay, Susie. I'm quite jealous. <ride> allora, Susie, tu hai fatto una foto con lei dei Motorhead due giorni prima che morisse. Eh, cosa ne pensi di lui come leggenda del heavy metal? Eh, niente, forse pari forse a Ozzy Osbourne, eh, che tra l'altro ha visto anche al concerto di Buckingham Palace. Ok, you took a picture with Lemmy from Motorhead two days before his sudden departure, his sudden yes. death. It's kind of strange if you think about it now, but what do you think of Lemmy as a heavy metal legend? Who's a legend who can get close maybe, maybe just at the same level as Ozzy Osbourne? Yeah, um, so, I mean, I... You know, I wasn't a huge fan of his music. Um, I respected his, you know, he was in the business for so many years. Um, he had very, very uh, big following and they, those fans stayed with him. Like Queen fans, stay with him, stay with the band. Like, very um, loyal fans he had. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was very sad to, to have that photograph so soon before he passed. Um, and, um, but yeah, um, I'm not quite understanding the question actually. Um, but can you just repeat your question? It's just, it, it's hard for me to translate it in terms of, you know, sentence structure because it, it's different from yeah. Italian to English. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of Lemmy as a heavy metal legend? Because my friend said that probably in his opinion um he's on the same level as ozzy osbourne Let yeah me. i mean you you i suppose so i just don't know enough about their individual music to really say much about the either one of them i mean ozzy osbourne you know yeah i mean he had some huge success um for many years and i think in the last few years it's not it, it's you know old fans that are remembering the old days probably um but yeah i, I don't i can't compare them because i just don't know enough mm -hmm. really i can't really compare compare them all i know is that you know they had huge following and uh they were two nice guys i think you know really okay yeah. sorry again it's just i'm yeah, it's no, that's fine. <laughs> I don't do this very often. No, you're very good at it. Thank you. Ok, Susie, allora tu hai visto per caso qualche concerto con Paul, Adam... Eh, chi preferisci tra i due? Uh, did you see Queen with... Uh, did you see Queen performing with Paul Rogers and Adam Lambert? And if yes, who do you prefer among uh, Paul and Adam? Ok, so yes, I did. And... Um, <coughs> Uh, obviously more recently with Adam. I think they're both amazing artists. I mean, you know, Paul Rogers is really known for having one of the best voices in the rock business. Um, and so he was absolutely fantastic. Um, and he reminds me of, you know, Chris Thompson, um, uh, you know, who we've sung with in the SAS band many times, who has also had one of the best voices in the rock business that I've ever sung with as well. Um, but um, as a frontman with Queen, um, you know, Adam Lambert and Queen, uh, as they said, it's never going to be just Queen. It'll, um, it was only Queen with Freddie Mercury. So it's always Queen featuring Adam Lambert or someone, and that will never change now. You know, Queen was only with Freddie. But um, I think Adam Lambert is absolutely fantastic. He is um, flamboyant, but in a different way than Freddie was. He's got the most amazing voice, different mm -hmm. from Freddie, but still probably one of the best voices I've ever heard. And, um, and I think he, he's a fantastic young frontman for the band and I think he's given Queen a new lease of life and I'm sure they'd agree with that I'm sure they do but yeah so I think I love Adam Lambert I think he's fantastic and you know Spike actually found him saw him on a TV show and mm -hmm. told, I think he told Roger but yeah it was it was um you, you know I just think Adam's amazing but you know Paul Rogers 
you know, he's a little bit older, isn't he, than Adam? So it's difficult to compare. <laughs> you compare them at the same age. They're both amazing singers and amazing artists. I just think that the the character that comes with Adam Lambert is amazing. He's really good at doing that job. And I don't think there's many artists. I can't think of anyone who could do that job. That I, I can't think of one other person in the world that would be good at taking over from Adam. Yeah. His vocal range is... Ah, it's amazing. I know. He looks great. He's good looking. He's funny. He's camp, but in a macho way. He's, he's brilliant, I think. Brilliant find. Yeah. Oh. I saw him at um, in London, yeah. The O2. Ok, Susie, allora tu quale album preferisci dei Queen e anche quei lavori da solista di Brian e Roger? Quale canzone o album preferisci? What's your favorite Queen album and what's your favorite album from uh, Brian and Roger's solo projects? Ok, um, Another World, Brian's one. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course, because I know it all so well. Um, that was lovely. With the Rogers, obviously, I mean, the last album, I love that. Um, Queen, Day at the Races, oh. you know, lovely for me. But, yeah. But, you know, just uh, there's just certain songs I pick out and uh, that I love as well. You know, I mean, one of my favourite songs is um, You're My Best Friend. Mm. Um, another one is... Um, I love that song, always have done. And you, you know, there's too many, isn't there? To I mean, I love them all really, but some I, you know, those two particularly, I love them. Yeah, the yeah, days of our lives and our lives, I, I love that beautiful song. Yeah, I've actually co covered that recently on, on an album. Wow. Sì, anche a me piace molto a Leo di Resis. Comunque, Queen Duel per me è il mio, è il mio preferito Queen Duel. His favorite one, I mean, he likes the day at the races very much. His favorite one is Queen 2. And since we're here, my favorite one is News of the World. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, News of the World. They're, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, that's interesting, a real good mixture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ok, Susi, allora sei venuta già in Italia, lo sappiamo. E ti piace il nostro paese? Since you already went to Italy, do you like our country? No. Ah. <laughs> I like it. Oh. I love your country. Believe that. I love Italian people. I love your country. And, um, you know, um, I've been sing there I mean, weddings there um, <clears throat> i love it and uh, i will always want to keep coming back to perform in italy whenever i'm asked um yeah i love italy you know and, and having worked with pavarotti and andre bocelli i mean and zucchero i've worked with zucchero a few times actually um, i'm trying to think where apart from pavarotti and friends He did something else. I did something else with him, but I can't remember what it was. Um, and he was great fun. Great fun. He's a very funny man, isn't he? Zuccaro. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a beautiful country and I love it. Thank you. Eh, Susie, allora, l'ultima domanda. Niente, con chi ti piacerebbe collaborare in futuro? o anche con artisti italiani o comunque internazionali. Ok, uh, is there any artist you'd like to collaborate with as a singer? I would like to do an album with Roger Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, I always think of, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Oh, there's loads of people I'd like to collaborate with, gosh. Um, and Brian, actually. Brian, mate. Um, mm, I did... Um, do you know Hotai? Do, do you know Hotai, the Japanese guitarist? No. He came 
Oh. He came and played. He performed with the SAS band at Shepherd's Bush Empire the last time we did it there, which was a few months <clears throat> or so ago, yeah. maybe two years ago. He's a great um, artist. Hotai. He wrote the music to Kill Bill, uh, uh, the theme tune to Kill Bill, and he's a very big Japanese artist, actually. I'd mm. like to do some work with him. <laughs> um, little lots of people I'd like to work with. Guitarists, you know, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so, oh God, I can't think of anyone at the moment, but um, I was trying to think of the guys from Led Zeppelin. And oh, one of the guys from Led Zeppelin did an, a, <clears throat> an album with a girl. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and, and I would like to do something similar to that, but I can't even think of her name, I'm really sorry. Okay. Look it up, she's quite famous. Um, but yeah, sort of like in a different style, you know, a twist of things. And that's what I've been doing recently with an um, our Boss of Rocks album. I did a, have you seen that? Boss of Rocks? Um, no. I don't think so. I've got this album. Look, um, it's on... Um, it's on iTunes and Spotify. Hmm. And, uh, I've done an album called, I'll show you this, but this is... Um... Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. okay. Bossa Rocks. So I've done two albums and one is Bossa Loves Abba. Mm -hmm. And Abba, uh, man, uh, their manager emailed me to say that they love my album. And this <laughs> one is um, Bossa Rocks, it's rock songs in a bossa nova style oh. so i've done two queen songs i've done one of rogers and one of brian's days of our lives and um uh brian's song is um <laughs> i can't remember <laughs> that's funny actually it's interesting because these are two but, completely different kinds of music it's interesting to see them yeah, it's like Ibiza chill out sort of music, mm. but I've done it all, all of rock songs. I've done two Who songs, Who Are You, you know, by The Who, and another song of theirs. And it, they're mostly people that I work with, but I would love you to listen to those I will. songs, especially on the Boss of Rocks album. I will. Because, um, you know, they, they, yeah, and um, they've said some nice things about it as well. So. Yeah, have a listen to that. I will, I promise. Grazie veramente di tutto, è stato stupendo veramente. Grazie veramente per tutto. Okay, this was the last question, so thank you for your time, thank you for everything. It's been nice to talk to you. And again, I love your hair colour. And uh, hair <laughs> colour. <laughs> and uh, yeah. That's it. It's lovely to talk to you both. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing this. And I hope we speak again sometime soon. And I'm maybe see you in Italy. Okay. Eh, speriamo <laughs> di vederla in Italia più presto. Se riesci a venire in Italia più presto. We hope to see you in Italy if you manage to come as soon as possible, as soon as you can. That would so. be lovely. That would be, that'd be so lovely. I'm, <laughs> I hope I will come soon. Thank you. We're waiting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Grazie, Susie. Grazie mille. Grazie, Susie. Ciao, Susie. Ciao. Ciao, Susie. Ciao. Ciao, Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, Ciao Susie. City crumble Silently I hear the sound While politicians back to fumble Hammersmith Bridge is falling down Cracks appear without a whisper Many millions to be found While milk 
Some order to build our London pride. 